introduction and uh, thank you very good morning to everyone and uh, very happy to see you once again in this e content development i could see from the nameless there are many people who are attending again uh, many times you have already attended the e content e content development training but again you are participating thank you so much uh, but we would like to just take because this is a session we usually take in every training many of you who have uh, many who are attending again the training session may think this is once again the same title and same session you have to listen about so i'm trying to add some new points to it so that uh, the ones who have attended should not get bored of the whole training uh, full module uh, so we will be discussing about um, the training session i could see 104 participants uh, nidhi how many people are to be supposed to join today uh, ma'am 116 okay so only we are uh, lacking to 10 about 10 people. people we have uh, mentioned it in the whatsapp group so maybe they'll join uh, as early as possible so anyway we will start the session uh, by the time we get into the main aspect of discussion i hope all of them join um, and i request two things one is like you should not keep only the zoom on and then do other work during this session uh, we request your participation during the session also because you have taken you have been deputed and taking time to attend here so we we request you all to participate in this and also we request all of you to be since attendance has been collected in the initial before the session don't enter, don't do that like because this is some common trend we see many of them just fill the attendance and they then get engaged with other sessions so we requesting you really not to do that uh, because we would like to really have your interaction and uh, if possible whoever for there is a possibility keep your videos on because it encourages the presenter as well to see your face and then interact which is much more interactive than uh, just talking to a system where no faces are seen okay so thank you so much i could get a immediate response many of you have opened your video if you have a data problem you please uh, you can switch off the videos so if there is a possibility keep it open so it helps us to interact us thank you so much so let's start the session let me share my presentation so this is what we uh, uh, nidhi can you confirm that whether my screen is visible properly yes ma'am it's visible yeah, thank you dikshit so we we are just going to discuss about the same points which usually under this title we discuss but uh, we will be discussing something more to add to this so we all have to have an understanding of what when, when i talk about ict integration what does it mean and whether we all have a common understanding so that is one thing which we all should have a common understanding so uh, we will be just taking a little discussion on that and we also will understand why do we need this and we will move ahead to uh, think about uh, how to do it how to integrate it and safety security i'll not be taking a separate points when and where it's required i'll be integrating it. okay so that's how we are going to discuss about this so before we go ahead i want all your reflections on what you have learned on last um last four days so can you all i'm just giving this link so i have just put a link in the chat box i'm sorry uh, i have put a link in the chat box i request everyone to click on this link when you click on the link you will be getting a um, message like this you will be asked to add three words so from last four days whatever you have learned write three words which based on what you have learned it should be a word not a paragraph only one word in each box what you have learned in last four days
We'll take next three minutes to just finish this. One person has submitted your response. You should write it in one word, not in multiple words. You should write it in only one word. So in the three tables, you have three boxes. So write, instead of writing video and audio creation in one word, one line, you should write video in one word, audio in another word, like that. 11 people have responded. So 103 people are there. At least 100 people should participate, leaving out CITT. Those who have submitted, keep observing the screen and keep reading what others are writing. Only 41 participants have completed. Uh, you should not write the answer. Some of you are writing in the chat box. You should not write in the chat box. You should only use answers in this activity. Last one minute. Still, we are getting answers in the chat box. You should not write in the chat box. You should write only in the activity. Uh, thank you so much for uh, at least writing this. So let's start our discussion with this itself. Okay. So when we have seen here, uh, at least 55 participants, 50 percentage of the participants have responded. So Nidhi, you have to make a note of it. 50 percentage are not able to interact. Whether okay, they are present in the session or they are not able to do is something which we need to. If you have any difficulty, please write in the chat box. But if you are able to do it, please participate. Still, if you have not, uh, if you have still internet issues, slowly it's working. Don't worry. Complete this activity so that before we uh, you keep listening and also you can complete so that it helps us to understand that you are still active in our session. Okay. Thank you so much. And uh, when we see here in the last four days, we have learned a lot of tools because what I could see is there are only two answers from here. One is there is a list of tool. Otherwise, it is a list of resource type. So only these are the two answers which has come up again in this very, uh, uh, very much um, returned by everyone is that. So what I could see here is we can see some of the text are larger in size. That means many of you have returned this answer as you have learned about animation, Canva, H5P, Lumi, GeoGebra and all that. So mostly we have learned 
all the various tools and we are through tools we have also learned how to create a video how to create an animation how to create an interactive how to create an audio resource how to create actually documents so you have learned all this but the main challenge comes when we talk about integration of ICT in teaching, learning, and assessment. Whether all these are ICT, can we say that H5P tool is an ICT, or the content created using H5P is an ICT uh, resource? So we need to have that clarity whether we are using ICT or not. So it's not mandatory always to use ICT. There can be two words. We need to be very clear with two words. One is ICT, another is digital device, digital tools. Okay, there are digital resources. ICT can be a tool as well as a resource. Same way, digital uh, resources can also be there. Digital tools can also be there. So what do we mean by ICT is something which we need to have a common understanding. I'm not going to conduct an activity. We are directly getting into it. So as per the definition of ICT, what it means as per UNESCO's uh, explanation, ICT refers to creating, storing, retrieving, manipulating, sending and receiving in digital information. So only when any software or hardware or any process helps you to do all the six, then it can be called as ICT. For example, we all have smartphone with us, right? Most of you now participated in this activity. So can I claim that I have used ICT now? Whether all this has six has been done now is what we are going to check. What is the first thing? We have creating digital information. Have we, have we able to create a digital information? 61 people sitting in different physical places have come together collaboratively creating a digital word cloud. That means this particular tool helped you to create a digital information, right? Was it able to be stored? So I can see here, today I have conducted this. I can simply reset the result. I've cleaned it now. Now, after four or five days, can I retrieve this? Can I, I have stored it and can I retrieve? There are two processes you can see. I'm able to store it and I'm also able to retrieve it. Let me see whether I'm able to store it or not. Okay, I'm saying seeing the history. You can see here when I show, when I see the history, there is a session one, which is shared, so stored. And when I click on this, I'm able to retrieve it back as a digital information. It was stored as a digital information. First, we created a digital information. Then we could also show, show, store it as a digital information. Then I was able to retrieve it as a digital information. And what, it, what the other thing says is, sorry. The next is it can also be manipulated. For example, right now 61 persons are there, okay? One more answer if has to be added in this. That's also adding, deleting, editing, all are manipulation. Making a copy of it, enlarging it, minimizing it, all are manipulation. So this is us. I wanted to use this particular image in my report because I have to write a report about my session. Right now, if you see here, it is in a software. So what I can do, I'm just taking a print screen of this particular activity. I wanted only this particular mind map. I just wanted to take a screenshot of this. I'm so sorry for it. So I'm just going to take a screenshot directly, print screen. I'm taking only, I'm, what am I doing? I'm cropping it. I want only this much of an image, right? Which I wanted to add in it. So I have now taken it. I can open any document. So I'm just going to have a report where I wanted to write a report. So I'm just opening a new document. And I just go there and then paste it. What have I done now? I can write that this is the participation. So I can write like um, overview of 
participation. So I'm just pasting this. I have created it. I have stored it. I was able to retrieve whenever I want. I'm able to crop whatever I want and then I have paid. I was able to use it in another place, right? So four aspect of what we talk about all in digital as information is able to be done. And also, if you see, when we when you typed in your system, you have typed and send it to me through the as a digital information. And today, whatever I'm getting it as a word cloud, I'm able to show to you because of the Zoom. You all submitted your information in an, another tab where you entered only three slides. You were able to send your information. I have got it collated as a word cloud. Now I am able to send and receive. You are able to receive. When you send, I was able to receive. When I send, you are able to receive. But everything is happening in the digital information form. So to enable this completely happen, what all we have used? There is a software which I've used as Mentimeter. This is one software I'm using. We are, both of us are using actually internet. Without internet connectivity, we would have not been able to really connect and share like this. We are using internet connectivity. We are all using a device. I'm using a desktop. You may be using a desktop or a laptop or a mobile. So when I say that I'm using ICT, it includes a software Mentimeter, a hardware device, and also internet connection. So there are three things involved in this. So this three together is called as ICT. I cannot say this software I'm using, Mentimeter is alone ICT. Mentimeter will not work like this until we have an internet connection. We cannot really add until we have a digital device. So when I say I'm using ICT, I am using three things together. So I should put say that ICT can be single item or sometime as a combined item. So right now here, ICT refers to three things together, which helped us to create, store, retrieve, manipulate, send and retrieve information. But if you see this, just this, uh, just this my, uh, word cloud alone, I can, this is not an ICT, but this could be a digital resource. Simply a screenshot of this, if I can save this without internet also, I can have this, I can just have this as a digital resource. But this is a digital resource and to see that then you will again need a digital device. To see any digital resource, you may need a digital device, right? In that case, still I'm using ICT, but I have more multiple digital resources and digital tools involved. Okay, so that is what we need to understand. For example, in our classroom, if we are using simply PowerPoint presentation in your class, you have created a PowerPoint, you could store it, you can retrieve it when you go to the class. Whenever there is mistake, you will be able to manipulate. But when you use it in the class, you are only showing it in the screen and you are communicating the information in the screen through your voice. So sending and receiving is not happening through digital information, rather it is happening physical. So in that case, I cannot say that I'm using ICT, but I can say that I am using digital resource. Any questions till now? If you have any questions, keep putting in the chat box so that I can take it in between, okay? Right. So let us just move ahead to understand now, why do we need um, digital device? Can I request uh, participants to open your mouth, mic and then you can uh, raise your hand. So to whom I, who would like to share, I can ask them to share. Why do you think technology can help in your class? How it can help? Nobody wants to speak. Please raise your virtual hand so that we can... To create interest, ma'am. To create interest, okay. Active learning, active participation. Active learning and active participation, very good. Any others? Ambuja, ma'am. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Can we go by name? So if you can raise your hand, it will help. Ambuja, ma'am, can you please open your mic? Yes. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. It's 
it's yes, very ma'am. easy and it's very effective way to students to interact with students okay it is uh, very easy to interact with okay thank you shridhar sir no very easy sir. to learn it <clears throat> very easy don't to learn easy to learn. it is easy okay shashikant sir madam it is a uh, 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 to create interest of a topic in uh, students and uh, to share their thoughts it is very important okay. to uh, integrate uh, it in our education thank you okay to achieve Aparna better ma'am. understanding madam aparna ma'am can we go by names aparna ma'am hello good morning madam madam it appeals to multiple senses so it would be better so it appeals to multi sensory okay thank you ramesh sir live pool madam live Please, okay sir. live interaction is possible make uh, teaching and learning more attractive madam it becomes more attractive okay nagendra sir more retainable nagendra sir it's able to retain what they have learned okay. audience engagement madam audience engagement murthy sir my uh, it creates uh, concrete ideas uh, for abstract concepts so it helps to create a concrete idea for an abstract very good sita lakshmi ma'am irisha good morning madam good morning sir after covid uh, students are very fascinated towards uh, digital devices like mobile phone and laptop and everything okay. by grasping their attention towards their digital devices we can uh, take them to our own classes by using this okay ram mohan sir empower the students ma'am empower empower the students okay last from nalini ma'am when we combine uh, two or more schools ma'am uh, it is easy for us to evaluate the students and also access uh, learning uh, interactions ma'am and it also saves time and it also give uh, visualization to the abstract ideas ma'am yeah thank you so much and if we see now to reduce distance also ma'am yeah thank you uh we will just start the discussion thanks for all your response one major difference we could see from right now i asked a question and asked you to respond and i asked one by one to speak out okay so when i told you to speak out now i have been able to call you by name and ask what is your input this is the way we can usually happen in our classroom when we wanted to interact but we did an activity earlier same way when i wanted your ideas to come in we also conducted a mentimeter activity what was the difference between these two? can you write in the chat box i conducted now two activities one i conducted through mentimeter asking all of you to give your response so you all responded in the mentimeter similarly i asked now a question and asked you to open the mic and speak what are the differences between these two you have to type in the chat box Uh, so i could see a lot of response one is major thing is time management right we could see that in few minutes using the digital way of conducting the activity we could get 50 people 55 people at least participate but this time only i could uh, because of the restriction of time i could ask only few people to talk others didn't get an opportunity in our classroom also we wanted every child to be engaged in the class teachers are not against students participation but we have a time limit 
because of which we never allow more than two to three students to speak in the class when we ask a question, right? And the two to three students, who will be the two to three students? Always talkative students or who want to be in the good uh, terms with the teacher or who is like very open to talk. So all the children who are shy, who think slowly, all of them lose their way of participation at all. But when we conduct the kind of activity that digital divides gives, so we can engage more children than the normal classroom. So that is one of the benefits we are practically able to see right now. The second thing, it's one is like it's giving equal opportunity for everyone to participate. Right now, when I ask physically, I have a kind of a sample. Out of 60, at least, out of 100, let me at least ask 10 people. I'm doing a sampling, right? But when I use a digital tool, I was able to give equal opportunity to all participants. All 100 could be equally able to participate. That is one difference majorly technology can bring in your classrooms when you use digital tools in your classroom. Second thing, it was also people, some people have written, somebody feels to write answer. Right or wrong, it's okay. I want to answer. Was there wrong answers when we uh, conducted this activity? When I asked like to write in the Mentimeter, was there any wrong answer? Somebody has typed the ABCD also as answer, which is not an answer at all. For them, it's more of a participation. They didn't have a fear of participating because your identity is not known. Who will going to find out who has given the answer was the kind of guts we have, right? But when I ask face to face, we have a hesitation to answer. Maybe my answer is right or wrong. I don't know. How will other people see my answer? So sometimes to break that kind of a fear, technology can play a vital role in our classroom. First, enabling the people to get the confidence to answer. If you see the Mentimeter activity also, initially, the number was raising slowly. Two people, then it took some time to come 4%. It took some time to come 6 But then after 10, you see, quickly the number raised. Why? Because some of them already saw the answers which are coming up. So they got a confidence. It's not that they are copying, but they got a confidence. Okay, this is what I have to, this is the way I have to think. So it is becoming a model. One person's participation is becoming a model to enable other person to participate without hesitation. That is what most of you have written in the answers also, right? That is why it made you active participation. In this online training, if I keep on speaking with my presentation, what will all of you do? What will you do? You will also keep the video off and do all other works, right? Nobody can have attention for anything beyond 15 minutes. So if I really want to talk to you through this online session, some or the other way, I have to keep you participating in somewhere I have to keep you involving. I should tell you to open your mom. You should have that, okay, somewhere I will be asked to participate. If you see the whole session is going on one way, then you will not realize, am I right or wrong? If you feel it's right, can you give me a thumbs up? Visual thumbs up. How will you give a thumbs up? Not physical. You have to give from the I care. I care. There are certain reactions given in your Zoom. So you can click on the Zoom reactions and give a thumbs up if you really feel that's true. So when we do in our classroom also, this is what is expected. If you keep on teaching on your own, though you may be an excellent teacher, your content may be great, your way of teaching may be very good. But still, if you are only presenting one way, no students will engage in the process of learning. Engagement not in the classroom alone. It talks about engagement in the learning process. That may... Just a minute, sorry.
I'm extremely sorry. So um, uh, when we see like this, until and otherwise we engage with each other, we cannot engage in the process of learning. As soon as I told them to share in Mentimeter, one person wrote in the chat box, right now I'm learning Mentimeter. Did I teach you Mentimeter? I only told you to participate. But have you understood that there is a tool which can help you? That's also a part of learning. So when you engage only, we will be involved in the learning process. Similarly, in our classroom, to bring engagement, digital tools can help us to make everyone get engaged. And uh, one more point is also like return in this, like we also could find out how many people were actively participating in the session. Sometimes in the classroom, we don't know whether student is listening to our classroom or not. Most of the online session is like that. Even the presenter may not have a smile at face because we don't know whether you are listening to me, what you are doing, we don't know. So what happens is mostly presenters see only the names on the screen and then keep talking to the mission, which will slowly build, bring the motivation down. But now I could see like Jacinta ma'am, Jason ma'am is always smiling. Whenever I just speak, she's reacting. She's giving a nod. Like I could see like some other teachers, like you know, some uh, Ubaidullah sir. So he was at least like reacting. Maybe he's turning the side and turning the side. So I could also see whether somebody is disturbing him. There is a question coming up in my mind. I'm trying to keep him towards the session. Somebody is come, trying to disturb him, I guess, but he's still concentrating. So this motivates the presenter to do a better job than normally coming and sitting and teaching in the session. That is what will happen to the classroom. When you use digital tool, it is not engaging to students alone. It makes the teacher more responsible in the classroom to be more attentive, to be uh, at, uh, like to be at uh, to, uh, re relevant to what they are reacting. If some people are writing in the chat box when I conducted Mentimeter that I couldn't participate. And if I don't see the chat box, what will happen? I will be keep on telling that people are not participating. But maybe there is a technical issue in the thing. So that is where it is making a teacher also to have an active role. That is what NEP talks about. So technology can not only make a student active, which many of you have written, it also makes teacher to involve actively in the teaching process. Some of us have been teaching for 15 years, 20 years, 30, 25 years. So what happens? Same content, same topic. Those students are different. Sometimes we come to a position of stagnation. We go to the classroom. We just repeat, vomit what we have planned. And sometimes we come. Every day keeping us in a, with motivation is not so easy. Right? Throughout the year, again and again, when we teach, keeping us with the same motivation, it's not so easy. But this kind of intervention with digital tools, with new, new tools will help us to keep us also motivated when we are teaching. So these are some of the benefits I could see that many people could write, bring out whatever is the benefit of digital, uh, digital use of digital technology in the teaching learning process. So it also helped you to actively learn. And another thing which also helped me is in the Mentimeter, if you saw, it collected all your responses and gave few answers as a highlighted one, few in different uh, font size, few in different colors, which helped me to know which is the most uh, given answer. There was uh, some kind of a decision making which I could do. Many of you remember H5P and animation. So now that's an input for us for the next program that out of so many things you learned in four days, the most two things which has taken your heart is animation and H5P, right? So this is an input back to the people who are conducting the training. But this kind of collating answer was not possible when I asked you to share one by one. There was repeated answers. Many of you repeatedly said it creates interest. So it was just repeating, but I was not getting time to take new points because the second person was also saying interest. Third person also was saying interest. So it was just losing the time. So this is how technology can help in quickly making decisions, quickly analyzing the data and making it easy for us to take the next step. 
we all know teachers in our classroom we spend lot of time in administrative work more than academic work because of the administrative role we play we take a lot of administrative work so that is what uh, stops us sometimes so we can use we can use this digital technology to help us to simplify our administrative works help us to complete our administrative works quicker and concentrate on more into teaching learning process so moving ahead how to really use this technology in our classroom okay so that's a third point which we wanted to discuss so let me share my screen again so the third point which we was wanted to discuss is how so this is some word which you must have got familiar with right now because you must have heard about this word adi when you were discussing about the process of developing digital content so i'm just going to use the same model of instructional design on how to integrate technology into our classroom learning process okay let me see like the first step of adi is analyze so why do you use te digital technology we have said we have all realized that there are lots of benefits so i'm going to use it but mostly you can reflect on yourself how did you start using just because diksha was forced to be used by everyone many times what happens is the state says like today you have to show that you have used diksha how many times there is a data which you have to submit right now you have to develop e content so you have to post it in the diksha so start using digital technology so are we using the digital technology because of force or because of some kind of a rule which i have to do it or tomorrow i have to apply for national teacher award one of the parameter has to show that i have used technology in my classroom so because of that at least let before two years i have should have used so today i'll start so that after two years i can apply for out what is making us to use technology all these points which we discuss now should not be a factor that really makes us to use technology but the factors that should enable us to make the technology is the demand of content my content is very abstract in nature which a child cannot visualize right the content is something which my child cannot see or understand without seeing so let uh, i need to show this which is not possible for for example i want to explain digestive system how many of us could understand digestive system without any visualization we are every day eating food three times minimum when we eat we know that it is getting digested in what step which organ is doing what process are we able to feel it can we feel it okay now my food is moving into the small intestine now this is happening can we feel it we can't do it there are certain things which we cannot feel nor see so surely there is a need of digital technology to show for the children to visualize for example i am from tamil nadu madurai so in madurai i have never seen spring season any south indian who has seen spring season the way in english poems in our english books it we have written that the flat uh, flowers will be of like this the trees will be of this the kind of a poetic way the poems are written by poets of western countries where spring is something which everyone enjoys in cut in place like me where i come from i have never seen a spring season the way the book writes so how do i understand and appreciate that poem when i study english i cannot appreciate right i have gone to andaman once so when we went to andaman they were we were going to see the place like the other places so from the major main city when you wanted to go to other place there was i don't know what to call it so i call it as boat only but in that they were just putting their vehicles and on a daily basis people were crossing from one place to another for job on they coming in a bike from one place and then putting the bike into the boat and then going and getting down the bike and going this was not a usual transport for me who is coming from the place where you don't have an umbrella but we talk about social science classes we teach about island this is how island is how do our child visualize 
until and otherwise we show that to her through a video or show it through an animation our children cannot visualize content so some content in our books in our syllabus or in our subjects demand digital use, digital technology to be used for example i just wanted to tell that new delhi is the capital of india to tell that do i need a digital technology i don't really need it simply in the board i can write new delhi is the capital of india read out the spelling learn the spellings and you should be able to repeat it but if i want to say that delhi is surrounded by these states i cannot write and show that if i write children may not understand so i need to show a map maybe a physical map we have maps in our maybe a child can be asked to take a atlas and then see what are the states which are surrounding uh, delhi that's possible so there is still not requirement for there is not a strict demand for a digital technology but if you are in your class if every child doesn't have an atlas and your map is so small that 40 60 children cannot see then you can use a digital image of a map right and then you can show in the bigger screen for all the children to show that is why in your context the context now demands not the content but the context demands a digital use so the second factor that demands you to use digital technology is the context itself sometimes you may need because my classroom is big i cannot write and show in the board i wanted a little larger screen larger picture because of the size of my classroom that is why i am using digital technology not because my content demands so sometimes we may use the digital technology because of the context right today what i did when i started my session i understood there is going to be 100 people in the training i want i am wanted to have a method of teaching that i want to take all your learnings of previous learning before i start the session so i have decided that i wanted to collect all your thoughts into one place that's a kind of method i have decided today to go ahead with my presentation so 100 people what is the i wanted to use this method of collecting your information but i have two ways one is i can ask you a question and ask one by one to respond but second is i can ask you to give answers in the mentimeter there was two options for me but because the context was large classroom i decided to go for mentimeter and the second thing since i wanted to collate all your responses to go ahead asking one by one will not help me so i took mentimeter because it will collate and give me an analysis so i decided to use mentimeter as a tool during this intervention because my method as well as the context mm -hmm. the chair am i so if we see the main things the parameters which should enable us to decide why i will use digital technology is this four whenever you want to tell that i want to use digital technology first thing we need to decide is it should demand it for it there should be a purpose purpose should not be for my own benefit of getting some award or just showing in facebook that i am using technology purpose should not be because the state will ask me questions so i am using it purpose should be based on my content demands technology use my learner needs it because the learner will not be able to see the context needs it right and also when you see the context in india we have various contexts some of our students are there with computers there are students with laptops there are students with smartphones with 4g connection minimum there are people who don't have computer or laptop only smartphone with 4g connection there are still our students and teachers who have smartphone with limited connection where you have a button phone sometime where there is no internet connection you some people do not have phone still we think that how can somebody live without a phone in this era but there are still people our school children you all have understood this i don't need to tell during pandemic all of you face this how much how much you were it was difficult for us to reach to every child because they didn't even have a minimum phone there are people who doesn't have television nor radio so there is no digital device also with them so we have a kind of a people who are in different levels of digital usage 
So when we plan our technology integration in our classroom, we should keep all this in our mind when we decide to use it properly. There are people with less knowledge of using digital, more knowledge of using digital. So this becomes our context. So I would like to share one small incident which happened in Karnataka, so which uh, will help us to understand why thinking about all this really matters a lot. There was one teacher who came and told us like, ma'am, we got some ICT training from the state and then we started using it in our classroom. Um, so we are very happy. So they keep on saying all the positive things that happens with use of technology, right? And after some time, the same teacher also tell that, ma'am, we have identified a girl. This school is in a rural Karnataka. And the girl, uh, she is a girl of class six or seven. I exactly don't remember, but she is of class six or seven. So this girl has been identified by the teacher because through one of the, uh, the, that the rural place has some kind of um, uh, internet browsing center. The browsing center owner came and reported to the teacher that this girl is often found in the browsing center, always watching pornography. So this was a complaint from the internet uh, cafe owner to the teacher. So the teacher was not knowing what to do next. She has understood the girl has got, the girl has got addicted. Uh, Diksha, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I got a message as internet is not working, sorry. So uh, th this, uh, this uh, teacher has got to know that the girl has got addicted, but how do I help her now? Because that is what we tell every teacher is the first counselor. You should address the problem which is coming at, at the first level. So the teacher has taken an effort to resolve, but doesn't know how to really handle it. What is the reason also she was not able to. So they approached us to help them out, like what to do with this, because the teacher is also a new person who has started using technology in the classroom. So when we wanted to understand this, we took help of a psychiatrist from uh, Nimhans. There is a shut clinic in Nimhans, which you must be aware of, some of you. Uh, if you're not aware of, in Nimhans, there is a clinic called shut clinic, which is only for addressing issues related to technology addiction, technology related problems. Maybe somebody has psychological effect because of using overuse of technology, less use of technology. So this clinic is mainly for that. Now government is establishing such clinics across the country to help out the problems coming out with because of the use of technology. So we took one of the psychiatrists help to help the person to find out why this girl is like this and how we should handle it. The teacher was afraid if they tell to parents, they may stop the girl to send to the school. That's a real scenario as well. So when this uh, particular um, uh, psychiatrist started investigating, talking to the girl and find out the reason came out, I'm just telling the story short. The, teach, the psychiatrist could identify where it started all about this. The social science teacher of the school has given an assignment because after the learning technology, she wanted to use technology in the classroom. So the teacher has given a social science assignment to go and know more about the state with four or five points. You have to know about the state on these points and write an article and submit. So that's an assignment for a classroom. So this student has to write the assignment. When she went, the parents are illiterate, they are not educated, so they were not able to help the child. And then they didn't have a phone with internet connection, the parent had a button phone. So she was not able to really search for information in house. So she went to the internet cafe, parents could only give them money to go for internet cafe. So she went to the internet cafe, started, I doesn't know how to browse, because school never taught them how to browse and found, find information. She went to the internet cafe at that time, the owner was not there. So she was not knowing how to do. So she took help of the boy who was sitting in the next cabin. So while doing so, the boy understood this girl is not having understanding of using internet. So every day this girl comes, the boy also started coming. That's where they started interacting and this boy misled the girl. Ensuring that he made it such that there will be some pop-up of certain pornography that comes up where without knowledge, this girl goes and clicks on and then get embarrassed because of viewing it with a male fellow. And this is how it all started. 
but it has become on a longer run an addiction but the child was not aware of what it is the child was not intensive intentionally doing it where it all started is because she wanted to do a school assignment in a better way where is the mistake here the teacher did a mistake of giving an assignment no we cannot say because this happened teacher should not give assignment right that's a conclusion many teacher takes right now when there is issue why better not to use technology let us go to classroom better be in that environment we cannot avoid because our students we cannot avoid even if you stop they will go right the only challenge was there was no problem with the student or a teacher but the challenge was when we give technology related works first is a teacher should be aware second is we need to give the awareness to the students and equip them to use the technology this doesn't happen only with uh, students i wanted to again tell one more incident uh, i'm telling this also with karnataka so karnataka people don't feel offended of taking examples all recreative examples from karnataka i have been working for more than 7 years in karnataka so that's how i know some of this experiences i'm sharing so please don't be offended out because of it so when we were working we saw like we trained one group of teachers to use technology and we also told them you should use technology technology helps to go out of the textbook this is was one sentence i told during my training right it uh, after the training after one and a half years or so i met the teacher again so the teacher told me ma'am right like one and a half years back i even didn't recognize her but she said i have been trained so now i used uh, technology in my classroom very effectively we said okay then she said like we can all, we were doing some research work so we thought okay let's go to this classroom if she is using technology let's go and observe her class how she is able to integrate because of the training which we have given so we went to her classroom to observe her classroom she is a science teacher she was teaching digestive system in the classroom she has used some animations and she was beautifully teaching the class uh, there were two more science faculty i am not a science person so i took two of our um, a regional institute faculty which is in mysore so two of our faculty accompanied us for doing it so we were just having a observation schedule and we were writing okay class started very good technology was well integrated we were putting everything tick mark and giving four mark five mark like that so we were happy that our teacher is integrating technology very nicely in between when she was talking about the functions of each organ between in small intestine and large intestine she just draw one balloon kind of figure and she said this is a new organ identify which can swallow all the um what we say junk foods which will digest all the junk foods so we were just surprised at that point so i turned to my faculty who is from biology background who is a senior most faculty and asked maybe i am not having a good general knowledge i was not aware there is a new organ found between small intestine and large intestine so i asked my faculty ma'am is it so there is a new organ which has been found in our body which can really digest uh, the junk food then means it's happy we can eat more of junk food madam was saying even i don't know that so we were right trying to check out like where is this information from so we asked the teacher ma'am where did you get this information she told me the repeated the statement which i told one and a half years back ma'am you only told you should use technology to use out of the textbook so i went and searched for new uh, intervention new inventions related to new information related to digestive system in the browsing i browsed it so i got this information from internet so i am adding content which is out of textbook we were really appreciating the effort of teacher but we wanted to really check the fact of the information so what we did is we told her to again do the browsing the way she did she just the way she did she landed in a page and she showed us the page and this is where i took this information from when we checked that it was a blog post written by a 3 year old sorry third standard child of some western country as part of the project so the ch the child has been third standard children have been given a assignment in that school to create a blog to write when i become a scientist what i will do so this third standard child has written if i become a scientist i will invent 
I will discover an organ inside the body that can digest all the junk food. Because the parent must have stopped the child from eating junk food, right? Telling that it won't get digested. So it was a creativity of the child. So sad, Ani. Yes, uh, Sita Raman, sir. It was so sad. He can put Ike immediately. That was the reality. Sometimes we use technology like this. We are so excited saying that I want to integrate technology. We take all efforts. But if we are not informed properly, if we are not oriented, if we do not know how to really use technology, then the use of technology is a disaster. Do you agree with me? This may happen in multiple ways. There are multiple stories like this that can be told to make us understand if we don't use judiciously the technology in our classroom, we will land up creating a mess in our classroom or creating a negative impact in our classroom. So whenever we wanted to use technology, let us remind ourselves that I am using technology in my classroom when I have a purpose when my content demands it, when my learner needs it, or it will be beneficial for my learner, or when the context demands this. So this is the four points which we have to keep in mind when we are going to integrate technology, right? That's the first step of our instructional design. Only if you qualify this, we need to go for the next step of designing our ICT pedagogy integration session. So to do this, this is just to recall, we first should know what type of digital resources are available. This I am not going to explain again. This you must have already learned in the last four days. I could see in the activity also. If you do not understand anything, anything in this slide, can you put it on the chat box? If you are not aware, what does it mean? Any of these digital resources which I put on the screen, if you are not aware, can you put on the chat box? Uh, there are few points which has come. What is AR? What is VR? What is its difference? And uh, you also wanted to know rich internet application, right? Energized book, right? Few points which uh, people have not been clear. I'll just explain that. Uh, we all have seen the textbook in our thing right now with QR code. All your te physical textbooks which have a QR code, most of the states have a QR code at textbook, right? So that is one level of energized book. Energized book is nothing but like, no, you are adding features to a book. For example, we are at the first level of energizing a textbook, only adding a QR code and connecting a digital content to a physical book. That is one. But if you see Korea, they are at the 15th level of energized textbook. In their textbook, what happens? It is a digital copy, like the way you have a e pub book. It's a book, but there itself, when a child is reading a material, if the child doesn't understand a single word, the child can click on that and it will take to dictionary. So the child will directly go from the textbook to the dictionary and learn the meaning of the word. If still after reading from the dictionary, the child doesn't understand the meaning then she can click on the video which explains the complete thing with a scenario. And after that, if the child is reading, in between she gets a query. She need not wait till late. She can just go there and then click on a chat box and start chatting with the expert. Ask a question in the expert, to the expert directly. So that, that kind of lot of features, the activity is embedded. There is no separate digital content and separate textbook. If you wanted to do a H5P activity, it is already embedded in the textbook itself. I do a reading in between, then I just do an activity then and there and I keep going. 
So like this energized level, energized book can be made with multiple features. In India, we have moved, like some of the states, most of the states have integrated QR code. Some states, like for example, Tamil Nadu in a law in the initial days, before even pandemic, in their textbook, science textbooks, when you scan an image, you are getting the video. There was scanning an image, you were getting an animation. So that kind of an integration was done in the textbook. So that is one level of integration. So that is how we make a normal book as an energized book, which has more features into it. That's what energized textbook means. Okay. The next thing is immersive content. So immersive content is overall topic under which you have a variety of things, which is one is argumented reality content. Second is virtual reality. Now there is more of mixed reality. So these are all immersive content. Immersive means you become part of it. Right? You become part of it. Can I request all of you to take your mobile phones and install two apps? I just install this one app. I will show something and by the time you can give this for uh, installing in your mobile. Right? Sky View Light, I have typed it in the check chat box. You have to install this app from your app store. I'll also show you parallelly. You can keep watching it. Okay? So let me show what is um, to show some of your content like this. What I'm going to show, you can also explore this. I'm just going to Google Art and Culture. This is an also available as app. You can go to install this app also, but everyone should install right now the Skyview Light at least. So when I go here, I can see like, no, I, I'm just going to check Ajanta. I have never gone to Ajanta Caves, but I'm just going to go now to Ajanta Caves. So when you scroll, you will get in this particular page like this with yellow symbol. So I'm just going to go to cave number nine. 19. So once I click on this, you can see now I'm in a desktop version. So I'm using the mouse to use it. But when you install in your mobile, you can just use that and then you can walk and see. Okay. So you can see now I have entered 19, but I can just see the whole cave completely into 360 D. Right. What I'm able to see is the complete thing. This is a 360 degree video, right? Right now, because I have only the limited device, I'm able to do only a 360 degree video. In this particular site, you have virtual reality content. Virtual reality means you will have a device when you put it and you will be having the complete experience of going into this particular place itself as if you are there part of this. That is what virtual reality means. You will be part of the physical. There is a physical place where you go virtually. That becomes a virtual reality. So let uh, I think like you must have by this time, everyone must have uh, installed your app. Uh, can you just open the app, all of you? Get, out, get up from your place. Don't sit in your chair. Get up from your place. Open the app. Just... Open the app, turn yourself 360 degree and watch. Open the sky view light. 360 degree you watch. Stand up, walk around, turn around, up, down. What do you observe? Whatever you are seeing, you can write in the chat box. What did you see? Can you open your mouth, uh, mic and speak? I'll get a chance for five people to tell your experience. Any five who can tell your experience of what did you see? First come, first serve. You have to raise your hand so that we can call first five people. Whoever would like to share what did you see? First five people can raise your uh, virtual hand. Okay. Razina ji. 
from Lakshwadi. Ma'am, you can open your mic and speak. Admin can uh, allow them to open their mics. Terazina, ma'am, you can open your mic. I saw the present position of the stars in the sky. Okay. Stars and other bodies. Were you also present in the sky? No, ma'am. You were not I present don't think in the sky? So. I was present in my position. I was Can you see the sky, whether the sky was present inside your room? Yes, ma'am. Right. Second person, anyone would like to share? <clears throat> Yes, ma'am. Yes, Jason, ma'am. Sorry, Mala, ma'am. It was a very beautiful and amazing experience to see the constellation like I'm it was feeling like I'm in the sky to see the star, the constellation and everything. It was a very amazing feeling, ma'am. It's a thrilling experience which we don't usually get to see all this around in your own environment, right? Malama was saying something. Uh, so the stars and the planets. Some experience. Of... So we'll go one by one. Malama, please complete. Stars are in my rooms, madam. So you are having, you were able to see the stars. Girisha? Yes, yes, ma'am. Constellations and position of planet in the constellations also. So you could see whatever is there in the sky. We did we go to sky? We didn't go, right? We didn't go to sky. We we didn't go to sky, but did the sky come to inside our room? Yes or no? You were able to see your own place along with the sky. Is it not? So we were able to see everything within your own space. So right now, your classroom has been augmented with a virtual experience of the sky inside your classroom. You are in a physical environment, which is augmented with the experience of having those things inside your classroom. So that is what we mean by augmented reality. So there are lots of apps of augmented reality which you can use. Maybe there is a this paper. So you can also go and uh, download and check yourself. Uh, there is a QR app when you install this and then you go and color the paper. Take the printout of the QR sheet, color the paper and then scan with the QR app. The paper, the diagram in the paper will be augmented and it will come as a complete simulation. Right? So that is what is about uh, yeah. Yes, Mohammed sir. Hello, good morning, ma'am. Yes, sir. So, uh, it is very interesting to show the sky and as well as the zodiac uh, satellites, even satellites also we are uh, uh, seeing there. So, it is so useful to teach the children. They feel very happy. So, we are in space. Like that, one more app also there, madam, uh, Sky View. Uh, there Sky are several apps, sir. This is only to show one example to understand uh, what is AR, okay? Yes, madam. Uh, this is actually, re children feel really very happy. And one more, uh, AR Lopa app is also there. Uh, to you can share in the website. WhatsApp group whatever apps you know so that others can uh, explore that. That is why the WhatsApp group is created. So okay, keep answer, giving, sharing your points so that others will be able to see. Mohammed sir, can I take your point so that we can move forward? So we are also running short of time. Yes, uh, Mohammed sir. Uh, I already sent them. Sorry, sir. Okay, right. Let's move forward. So we, we have understood like what it is and some, some people were asking about what is um, this one, like no, which is meant by rich internet application. Like for example, when I go to a website of, um, suddenly it doesn't come. I'll just give you an example, just suddenly it doesn't flash in my mind. So I'll just give you an example of rich internet application. Uh, when I just, it clicks on my mind. Okay, so these are some of the resources we will be able to use. And this you must have learned when you have learned about video and audio format. It's not about choosing the resource, 
we have to choose the appropriate presentation format also when you wanted to use technology and there are n number of digital tools which you would have learned at least few during this training but there are this is also a small compilation by one of our faculty but there are many more tools like this which you can use it in your classroom so this five days training will not help you to understand all the tools it would have just only introduced you the titles of the tools may maybe the names but if you really want to learn the tools what you can do is ncert is keep on conducting training so you just go and type a ciet webinar in the thing you will be getting this first one fight covid 19 join us on webinar when you get this page you can see there are 900 plus sessions already done and their completed recording is available okay so in this you have explanation for every two for example now i was using mentimeter somebody wants to learn how to use mentimeter so just search mentimeter you can see like how to create interactive using mentimeter there is a english version and also there is a hindi version now go to this video and watch and you can learn so somebody wants to know, know like how you will use like padlet you must have used but how to create one and use it so you have a session on this so we have given lot of content on this where you can keep learning yourself so the video and presentation is available for self learn the second thing is you can also go to ciet workshop when you go to cit workshop this is certified 5 hour short trainings every week there is a training and it will be put on this like these are the completed ones this is the running current one so right now every first week there will be training on cyber safety every second week there will be training related to something on uh, nep every fourth week it will be on development of e content because this month we have dashara it is being done at third week otherwise every fourth week you will have so this week we are going on uh, video resources very specifically five hours to understand only video resource so when you go here you will get all the details of all the sessions and you have to register yourself participate and then lastly there will be assessment whoever gets 70 percentage and above will get assessment these are the two places you can keep yourself updated to continuously keep yourself learning about various digital technology that can be useful for yourself and we also need to decide how i am going to use technology whether as a supplement whatever i am teaching i wanted to give it for extended learning so that whether i am going to use technology that whether i am going to use technology to complement for example now i am using this presentation to complement what i am saying it is sub, it is just whatever i am telling it is helping you to enhance that so that is how complement we can use it sometimes we can use technology in an integrated way right sometimes an infused way yesterday you must have seen the, the softwares like geogebra stellarium or calcium all these softwares are tools where technology is infused where you cannot segregate the presentation nor the, the segregate the content nor the technology it is both are infused right tools like padlet mentimeter all that are integrated because the software is separate you put the content and you can use it so whether you want to use it as supplementary or complementary we can decide or whether you wanted to use it as integrated way or infused way also we can decide so this is the ways in which you can use so whenever we design it should be having a focus on content presentation should be relevant to the learner and learner participation also should be enhanced so when we move on the development i wanted to only focus on two points here one is we should blend in our classroom blended learning should be integrated this is not something new maybe today we are talking blended learning a lot this is not uh, we are not expecting you to know all this theory this i put it just for those who want to learn more you can take the clue from this word and learn more so blended learning is something we all keep implementing in our classroom without knowing that we are doing blended learning during pandemic everyone used blended learning what we did is we send um, this is one blended learning where we just send uh, the message like the video through the whatsapp where it is a a synchronized way of sending digital resource 
and then we had a live session where it was synchronized. So the blend of asynchronized and synchronized was there. So similarly, you can also have blending in terms of rotation. Sometimes they are in the lab where they sit into the system and work. Sometimes they come to our classroom where the teacher uses a bigger screen and teach. That is also blended learning model, which is station rotation model. So like this, there are various models which we can use. So if you want to learn more about this, there are courses and books which you can learn using that. Uh, but only thing we need to do is whenever we integrate technology, we need to blend our, blend any of these aspects. The last point which I want to insist is that we also, when we use technology, we need to focus on embodied learning. Embodied learning means you are involving cognitive, physical and psychological things together. Right? For example, when we use most of the time to use the technology, we forget physical. So for example, how technology can be embedded with physical. This is an example video. I will we'll be sharing this video. You can watch uh, completely later. I'm just showing a simple example. So if you have seen this particular video now, if you have seen this particular video, this is, this is something that related to what we do in our classroom. We keep the same thing in the board, interactive board or um, smart board. We tell the student to come and touch in the fingers. Do we do this? There are schools where it is available, we do this, right? What they have done is that they just made the complete thing in a reverse way on the flow. It has just the top projector, which is projecting the content instead of a board on the floor and they are making the child too physically involved. So whenever we use technology, mostly we lose the physical part. Right now, last one and a half hours, we were sitting and listening. Was there any physical interaction? If I have not asked you to get up and do the Skyview Light app, you would have sat for one and a half hours in a physical mode in the same position. So, which is not good for any of us, right? So, whenever we use technology, physically, we need to involve children. That is where when we choose app or some digital tools to be used in class, it should be always planned with the physical activity. Similarly, we should understand that psychologically also we need to involve the child. There are students who don't like technology. All, we are all very happy to say that uh, even six months baby is operating the mobile very happily, right? But the thing is, child is not using and because they understood they are only using it, just they are imitating the parents. They have not learned what they are doing. They are imitating parents and scrolling it. So just because six months onwards they are using, we cannot understand that children like technology. You question yourself, for what purpose we use technology? for watching movie, for watching serials. Maybe YouTube also, you can just question ourselves. We may watch it for some news to understand. How many of us use it for learning purpose of our content? Very less percentage. Comparatively, some of you may raise your hand. Some of you may say out of the 100 percentage of time, you may use it for 5 percentage of time only for that. But otherwise we use it for entertainment. So today children like technology for entertainment and for engagement, but many children do not like the technology for learning. This is what this research says. So when we use technology, we also need to take the aspect of um, how children's psychological aspect, the interest of the students, the likingness of the students, their inclination, their aptitude to use it, their attitude towards it, all this has to be considered while we plan lessons. And the fourth stage, when we implement it in our classroom, when now after learning a lot of things, you may want to now try out in your classroom. When you try out, always do a short, at least, uh, research. What we call it as action research. Please try to see whether it is really creating any impact, whether it is being liked. 
so that once you see all that, you will be able to evaluate yourself whether this impact is helpful for the students or not. So with this, I stop. Thank you so much for listening. If any questions is there, I can take it up for the next two minutes or we will be closing it. Is there any question? Okay, so thank you so much to everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the wonderful and detailed session. And I hope all the participants will benefit from the session.